Let's go home and get paid. Spend some time with the family. Previously. I've got a deal. Glenn's got a deal. I'm not sure what's going on with Bryce. Hey, Bryce. Hey, Marcus. How you going? You after any lobos at the moment? Just these two little restaurant deals, we're talking around $25,000. <laughs> it's lobster season. What the fuck are you doing, mate? In the waters of Tasmania's rugged coast. Look, we can have fun and games. Sometimes you can go too serious and it starts a war. At the end of the day, Bryce, don't put another banana on the boat, mate. Three hardcore lobstermen are battling for the biggest catch and the best price. Fuck! He's gone! This is disaster. No, nah, the throttle came was gone. We've broke down. We've got nothing. Without it, we're a dead ship. Yeah, fuck, mate. This fucking shit up. If we can't fix this and get in today, I don't know if Mill's price is there tomorrow. Fucking banana. I was just stripped in there. Yep. Oh. How many pots have we got to go? Fucking too many. This is disaster. We've got fish on board, fish are sold. Mel wants to get them to market. This is the worst case scenario. So we need to get on top of this as soon as we can. Today is meant to be Squizzy and Tabor's last day at sea. But a major mechanical failure has marooned them five hours from home. And upon inspection, the problem could be much worse than first thought. I thought it was the throttle cable. Tabor's pulled it apart. Now we've realised all the gears are stripped. It's the whole control unit what is stripped. We've got a fucking spare one on the boat. I swear to God we've got a spare one on the fucking boat then. We're stuck in forwards. We've got no reverse, no neutral, and we're on low revs. We're a dead ship. Not one down there, Tobe. I thought it was in the fucking fish bin down the side of the tank. Unless you took the fucking thing home. We're going to find a part to fix this. I'm pretty sure we've got one on the boat, but it's going to take time. I don't know how the fucking hell you're going to be able to do it up. That fucking grub screw will be that fucking rusted in there, man. We don't have one. This is the banana shit coming back. This is banana voodoo. Thanks, Bryce. Very nice scrub screw here. Come here and have a look. Pushed in. Look. Ah, uh, the bottom's fucked come out. Me driving the boat with wet hands over years of time is eat salt water, it's eating away the centre where the grub screw and that go. There's nothing there. It's just broken clean off. Fuck, man, you ain't gonna fuck him. With more than $90,000 worth of lobsters in the tanks and a 2 p.m. delivery deadline, Squizzy needs a miracle. There is no way to fix this. We're a dead ship. Fuck, you are just not gonna move that. Yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. As they pull their final shot, the boys from the Anson's Bay are hoping they've done enough to hold their place at the top of the tally board. I tell you what, they don't admit it, but the boys are, I think they're happy to be going home because you can just see the work rate's picked up a little bit. Everyone's really happy. Not stressed. Oh, the finish line's in sight. We've been out here for 24 days, so for me, personally, this is nearly as twice as long as I've ever been out before, so I'm pretty bloody rooted. Every cray adds more money, so more crays the better. I'm buggered from fishing, but I'm still putting everything I can into our night shots. Like, we're not out here just to bug our ass around. We want as many as we can get, so that's what we're out here for, and that's what we do. Snotty's previous deal with fish buyer Steve still stands. 
$50 per kilogram all in. Five days ago, he unloaded the $78,500. Today, Snotty's due to cash in again. It's always a bonus if you can get a good, good last shot like it is, but like being up in this area, I'm not expecting the world, but anything over 50 will be a bonus. You know, there's a problem if you can't even catch a shark. This ain't no idea, old boy. Oh, it's going to be like that, is it? A cray would be nice. Any sort of life. We're out here to make money, and we need to make money. Things are not looking real super duper here at the moment. I don't, I don't know about this spot. They're not very lively. That's what you call a red. That's a nice lobo. Yeah, we'll take him. Perpetually stuck in last place on the tally board, Bryce and Lockie's biggest concern isn't their overall numbers. It's the weight of each lobster. With the current way these lobsters are weighing at around the 850 gram average, things are going to get tight. By Bryce's calculations, he has about 1.4 tonnes of fish in the tanks. This boat needs at least a tonne and a half minimum just to make money this trip. Bryce will need to bag 120 fish this morning. Otherwise, he'll be running the trip at a loss. Nice spot there, mate. It's good spot. Got some nice beetles. His catch is not the only thing on his mind. With yesterday's Brindle lobster price rise, Bryce's once profitable direct deal with two restaurants is now losing him money. Just giving Marcus the lobster shack a quick buzz. Hey, Bryce. Hey, mate, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. That's good, that's good. Don't know if you managed to have a quick look, look at that, that photo or not. Um, yeah. Every day is a new day on the market. I think it's one thing in the industry that will never make sense to me. It's the price of these lobsters. And I've got you and Muir's obviously paying 45. Obviously, that's a bit of a, a problem now. We're just trying to work out what to do. Turns out the Brindles have come up to 52, but only up to 800 grams, which means the lobsters that I've already pre-sold to Muir's in the Lobster Shack, I'm now losing $7 a kilo on. Despite their verbal okay. deal to deliver 600 to 800 gram Brindles, Bryce is hoping the Lobster Shack will take ones over 800 grams instead. What about your six to eight hundred gram brindles? 52. You prefer the 600 to 800s? Oh, well, I just want what we normally get. I mean, 45 bucks all in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just a hard one with the with it all. Now, the only thing I can offer you, if you if you can take our 800s to one kilos at 45 brindles, the reds which Sauco are paying 45 for 800s to a kilos. Happy to do them at 45 as well, if you're able to do 800s to a kilo brindles at 45 as well. Yeah. So, but I know I completely understand where you're coming from. I, you know, all, all we can sort of do is that roughly the 800 to kilos at, at, you know, 45 is what we need. The lobster industry operates on handshake deals. Break that bond and the consequences can be disastrous. But in this deal, Bryce believes he has the upper hand. Marcus's business is called the Lobster Shack. If you don't have lobsters, it's just a shack. So, but if you need to have a think, have, feel free to please think and... Yeah, OK. No gotcha. worries. All right, cheers, Marcus, mate. At the end of the day, I'd be doing the deal for 45. It works for me and it definitely works for him. You see what comes of it? and see whether we work together or whether we just give up. I've just gone and caught 400 lobsters for him. That's a $13,500 payday, and he's talking about dropping out now. That's not good.
Will the last pot have crayfish in it? Probably not. Just come on, give us something nice to finish off. Oh, that's about how long me fucking trip's been. <laughs> We're out of here. We're done. We're going. That's the last pot. That's this trip over and done with. We can turn this boat around and start heading home, so I'm happy. After 24 days at sea, Snotty's final shot adds 58 big reds to the Anson's Bay tanks. The bulk of his catch was sold five days ago. Snotty decided to keep fishing while the price was up, and it looks like that decision has paid off. Yeah, so we've, we've got a nice few fish in the boat, so, yeah, hopefully we can make some money out of it. It's just, that's what we're up to. So we're even going to tie the boat up when we get back, or we're just jumping off and going home? It, it just, it didn't Mate, that was just a waste of breath, really, weren't it? <laughs> you like it, talking for the sake of talking sometimes. <laughs> Well, what you can do every time, you can pull it out a bit. You're just going to have to be fucking careful parking this fucking boat, man. Well, we're going to pull the pots first. That'd be a good start. The entire unit that controls Squizzy's throttle and gears has given way. Rusting out after years of being handled by salt water drenched hands. There's no road service out here. There's no tow truck. Mate, we're on our own. With no hope of repairing it, they need a whole new unit. Uh, if, you had, like, if I could have got that grub screw, I could have packed behind it, but... At the end of the day, you've got to lean on the fellow fisherman, mate. That's all what's here. Chief didn't bulk attend you on this one, Bryce. Oh. Yo! Mate, have you got a spare gear lever and throttle lever? Uh, I could check. What was that? Because uh, we we're a broken boat, drifting. Uh, Roger, I'll make a quick phone call. Yeah, she's um, gone. At the end of the day, as I say, banana, bad voodoo. That, that's what it is. That's just that's one thing after another. Do we blame a banana, or do we blame lack of maintenance? It's up in the air. Oh, we got a spare uh, throttle on the boat, as in the, the, the gear lever. Squeezy's just, uh, he's just, just stopped. So we look. Yeah, no, I'm just on the phone to Dad now. We've just had a look and there's, um, we did clean out there recently. We didn't come across another one, but I'll pull the other side of the bed up and have a look. Squizzy and Tabor have been able to manually click the bold contender's engine into gear. But it can only go forwards and only at a rate of two knots. I don't know, Amy, what's we got to go? We're over halfway, just probably got 20 hot, maybe, more. Two donuts as we pull them. Plan A is get the pots up. I've got to get them up before I even think about trying to steam this boat up. This has gone from a stress-free day and simple to out of control, just let's get this fixed, get these pots up, get these fish to the buyer. Today, not tomorrow, today. You're too big. You need to be tiny. You must be this size. With fish buyers currently favouring smaller lobsters, Bryce and Lockie have found themselves in a conundrum. They need one and a half tonnes in total this trip to make a profit. And to get there, they need to catch at least 120 of the smaller, market-friendly lobsters this shot. You don't expect much when you fish in this area. It can be really good sometimes. But today isn't their day. The shot only yielded 74 lobsters with an estimated weight of 60 kilograms. I know the other guys are going back to unload. However, we don't have anywhere near enough fish on the boat. So we're going to have one more shot, because I don't want to go home without it. An extra night at sea, the extra expenses that come with it, and a restaurant buyer not willing to move on price. It's a bad day for Bryce. 
I've been selling to these local restaurants for over six months now. Everything's been pretty good since. However, this is the first time we've had, had a problem and it's just not looking good. With the Lobster Shack deal looking shaky, Bryce must now negotiate with his other restaurant buyer, Muir's. If they can take a different weight range, he can sell the smaller, more expensive lobster elsewhere. It's a make or break call to his contact jock. Hey mate, how you going? Hey, good, how are you? Good, good. Hey, good question for you. Are you able to yep. do... Um, I know he's talked about 600, 800 gram fish. I'm thinking it may be better if if you can take 800 to a kilo. Now this is like 801 yep. grams is what they classify. Yeah. Like, no, that's fine. That'll, that'll work for us. That's not a problem, mate. Yeah, I'm happy with that 800 to, to a kilo. That works. Thank you so much. No problem. Cheers, Cheers, mate. That's all good. Cheers. I'll talk to you soon. No, thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you, buddy. Mules are happy to take our fish that are 800 to one kilo at 45. Jock's a young, young guy in the industry. He's it's just always a pleasure to deal with him and always happy to have a discussion and work something out. So I've just got to discuss with Lobster Shack what they want to do. I never wanted to budge my prices. I shook over the phone, I said $45. The only thing I need to change is the size that you're receiving. That's it. I can't lose $7 a kilo. This trip's just been cursed at times, you know. We th I thought I was home, uh, sweet home. Heading home, sweet, but look at us now. You know, people don't uh, think of curses on the water or boats. I do believe them, and this is why. The banana's gone on the boat, we've lost a pot. We've had bad shots. We've had emotional times, stressful times, and now this. The bold contender is in limp mode. A broken gear throttle means Squizzy can only go forward and only at one speed. It'll make pulling his remaining pots tricky. I don't have neutral reverse, so if I round up these pots the wrong way and I, and I can't stop, they're going to go in the prop and snag up. But someone's going for a swim. Their 2pm deadline to deliver to buy a Mel is looming large. Fuck me. <laughs> this has been one of the hardest shots to pull, but the shot looks great. Yeah, no, this, this was our don't give a shit shot. And it's, um, touch wood, it's, it's going all right. Fish look awesome. The shot's looking really, really good, but at the end of the day, I just want to get all these pots on board and get this boat underway heading back to Margo. So at the moment, them hydraulics are just running at a speed that I can't control. So the pots are coming up fast, and I'm stopping them just when they come out of the water. There's some nice red ones in there. We've got six spots to go. Can't wait to get the last one up. We'll have a play around with it and then get the throttle down. Look out, Toad. Look out, look out, look out. <laughs> the shot looks awesome for in the area we're in. Like, our fishing has been bloody awesome. Pots are up and on. We're going home, baby! 26. Hundred and twenty-three! Hundred and twenty-four! Hundred and twenty-four this morning, last shot. I didn't expect that. Some nice red ones too, which were out a little bit deeper, so. That's good. 
Really good. How that 124 will affect Squizzy's place on the tally board won't be known until all three skippers are back at port. Like, the best way to measure who wins is who gets the best price and who has the most kilo. It don't matter how many fish you got, it comes down to kilos. You get paid for kilos, so that's the best way to measure. It's not far away now, mate. <laughs> Nearly on terra firma. I'll be happy to get, you know, get everything done, unload, and just go home. So we'd only been out a few days. The majority of our cats got unloaded at Southport. In the five extra days they were out at sea, Snotty and the boys managed to haul in 411 big reds. We'll go. We'll just go forward enough so we can get the back one onto there, eh? But it's not the number of lobsters they've caught that matters to fish buyer Steve or to Snotty. We get paid on weight, and we've got weight. Happiest fish I reckon I've ever seen. Oh, that's good, mate. You just didn't quite get enough off. Okay. Each lobsterman does their own deal with their own buyer. Snotty's deal with Steve is for $50 per kilogram, no matter the lobster's size. Off their chop. Oh, fish are in bloody. Yeah, Steve would be happy with them. They're bloody. The boys are having trouble keeping them in the bin, so they want to jump out. So they're happy when they're like that, so. It's when they just, you throw them in the bin, they sit there limp and all that, that's when they're not good, so. Nah, they're happy little chappies. Might just get you to move them pots so we can get that bait out. I'll sit down before I fall down, I'm a bit wobbly. <laughs> Steve's just working out our weights now and I've just got to do the book work and the boys are getting the bait out. Once the bait comes off, we're done. I'm going home, mate. So, what's your final guess? 342, mate, my guess is. 359.97, so 360. Oh, you're joking. I had 360 wrote on the book. I should have stuck with the original number. <laughs> I was thinking I was so over. That's the first time you would have ever had it. Um, I've got 360 wrote on the book. And I just thought then, I thought, I don't quite reckon they will go that now. Snotty's five-day trip tops up the Anson's Bay bank account by $18,000. So we had 360 plus 1570. So for our mucking about for the whole time we've been out, we ended up with 1930 kilos, so. I'm pretty happy with that. We had 20 shots for 1,930 kilos, so... Combining both unloads, it's a $96,500 sale. But is it enough to beat Squizzy and Bryce? All right, mate. I've got a couple little jobs to finish off, and I'm going home. See you later. Champion. See you later, mate. See you, guys. My guess, the top of the tally board, Squizzy. When it comes to catching brindles, like, he can go out and catch three or 400 for a shot, so you haven't got to have too many shots like that and your numbers just go boom, like they explode. So I'm tipping squeeze. Snotty's on dry land. Squeezy is limping to port. And the Greenhorn gang of Bryce and Lockie begin to set another night shot. We haven't had this extra shot because our last two shots, they just weren't good enough. And we're not going to hit that one and a half tonne I wanted. The other guys don't need to do it, because they've just got that experience. They know what they're doing. And sadly, this is just the price you pay. A good shot in this area, you're talking 150, but 200 would be really nice. That'll, that'll bring us home. I think with the way the industry is, with how few fishermen there are now, and with how many will retire in the next 10 years, it's important for, for all these younger generation of fishermen to be training each other. You better have made me a coffee. Hey, I know what's going on. He's letting me shoot him in, aren't you? Hey, there's three pots here for you to shoot. This little spot we're in, it's where I learnt sort of to drive a boat as a little kid. It's a place that I've been fishing for a fair few years myself. And it's a perfect opportunity and a perfect place to give Lockie the chance to drive the boat. 
There you go, mate. There's your skipper pie. Oh, thanks, deck bitch. So I appreciate you. Thank oh, oh, there you go. Oh, hurry up before it wears off. I don't have all day. When it comes down to it, I do see him as a brother. There's a coffee there too, mate, for you. What? Fuck, you're a good deck am. You ought to appreciate him some days. So I want to make sure Lockie gets given the same opportunities as me. He wasn't born into it like I was, so he wasn't given that opportunity to be running around the decks with, with your father or family members. Do you remember the buttons? Do you, know, do you want me to tell you the buttons? Just a vent. Horn and then a vent. Yeah. Just be nice with it, all right? Scary. I'm shitting my pants. My knees are shaking. He, he met my family just being what we call a wharf rat. He was hanging around the wharf, fishing all day long, not going to school. He just loved fishing. His first trip, he was 16. He went with Dad up the west coast, and he loved it. And he never wanted to get off. Oi! Hurry up! I'm just, I'm just making my deck end. Hurry the fuck up. And when he came back and he found out that there wasn't another trip to do, he was pretty upset. And that's when he came over and hounded me. Bryce and Lockie are the youngest team in the fleet. They started fishing together four years ago on Bryce's first boat, the Ambry Dacra. You missed one, mate. There's a good spot there, mate. Oh. And have been inseparable ever since. Hey, Bryce and I have come a long way together. I jumped on with him when he first started fishing. I was only new to the industry as well. We both learn a lot. We've learned a lot, a lot off each other. Where were the young fellas in the industry? There wasn't really anyone else our age doing it. That definitely makes it hard on us. Like, we have all the old timers bloody telling us this and telling us that. We're, we're only trying to make a living as well. I was only lucky and I've definitely come a long way in four years. A lot we've both gone through and, and, and you know, uh, definitely helped each other through and therefore sort of built a bit of a different relationship that people might. People outside looking in might be like, what the hell's going on there? Just a better fever deck, Cam. You've worked hard today, mate. Thank you. You deserve it. Is that all the sauce I get? For me, I was brought up with not being told you've done a good job or anything like that. So often with males, it's a hard thing to pass that forward. There's appreciation there. It's just the bond that we have. That's how slow you are. Did one day this will be me? One day. The pots are set, but Bryce's deal with the lobster shack is still up in the air. The fate of a $13,500 payday comes down to a text message. So the uh, uh, lobster shack's decided to pull out. So, yeah, you told someone to go and do something, you've gone and done it, and then I've, I haven't changed the price. However, I've changed the grammage by fucking 100 grams. And that's, uh, that's all it takes. So. Thirteen and a half thousand dollars gone. So it's about fifteen hundred dollars out of Lockie's pocket. Gone. I think it's pretty silly. The restaurant shouldn't be able to. Um, it's silly because the price never fucking changed. I want to get the easiest park I can at Margate. But I'm not going to have the full mobility to move this 90-ton boat around. Am I worried? A little bit. If the front of the wharf's free, I can go out wide and just slowly come along the front and then just guide her in. I'm baby. Years of experience coupled with sheer skill has meant the bold contender crew Here I am. Yeah, uh, that'll do you. have averted disaster. Fire off, Kate. Pull her in. Just push off on it. Their broken boat 
is home. Beautiful. Nice job. Here's what I thought. My mind now is on unloading the fish, make sure they're all top notch, and uh, get paid. I'm looking forward to it. With Squizzy back on time, his deal will go through. The only question now is does he have enough lobsters on board to knock Glenn off the top of the tally board? All fishermen are competitive. We all want to win. You go over here, mate, for Let's go. We ended up with 2,215 fish for the trip. But at the end of the day, it's not how many fish you catch, it's the kilos. It's the kilos what count. You don't get paid per lobster, you get paid per kilo. So the most kilos wins. There's a lot of small fish in here. The 50 and 55 dollar one, so that's that's really good. The price is absolutely awesome. Thanks, Bill. Woohoo! It's 330 in the bottom grate. Lobsters, I'm gonna keep them sell to the public. Hopefully they all go. Selling to the public, I totally enjoy it. It covers our costs, they get cheap lobsters, and they love it. Right now, for the first time in a week, I feel a little bit de-stressed. Right here, right now, I feel a little bit like I could have a beer and smile. 1,826 fish you got, Chappie. Number unloaded to processor 1826. Chappie took 1,826 fish. How many kilos you reckon they went? 1740. Nowhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> right, you yes, go. Anyway. 1650. I'll go 1475. I reckon I'm right, aren't I, John? Yeah, I reckon you're very right. <laughs> Ended up with 1475 kilos. Yep, and we've still got some in the boat to sell to the public, so I'm wrapped with that. Squizzy won't know his final paycheck until his fish have been weighed and sorted. Ten days ago, we didn't know what the market was going to do. It was all bad. And we took the gamble and it's paid off. Day 11 for the Chieftain crew and high hopes their extra shot delivers. Started off pretty well. Another two out of that pot, we'll keep trotting along. Can it propel them up the tally board and turn the trip into a profitable one? Like I've always said, 100 is the minimum you want. You never really want under 100. Now that's what you call a good pot. It's got some weight in it. Probably our second good, good, good pot of the morning. We had one for seven. Another seven. Last pot of the morning, apparently. A couple of nice ones in it. This is one of the reasons we come here. This is what we want. Beautiful. Oh. Biggest, biggest fish of the shop. We didn't get anywhere near our goal today. We ended up with 75, about 50 kilos. All I know is that's covered the costs. We may hit or we may not hit this 1.5 tonne. How you going? You're the first customer. Beautiful. Uh, since you're the first customer, yep. how many lobsters do you want first? Three. Three? You get another one for free. So you'll have four for the price of three. So we sell off the wharf for $65 a kilo. Just go, mate. Go. Yep. If this all goes to plan today, there's probably $25,000 worth of fish still in the boat. Okay. My daughter Charlotte will fix you up behind you. Yeah, mate. No worries. 340, 350 with the jumper and the stubby oh, There you go. Thank you. How often can the public come straight down to a lobster boat, meet the fishermen, and buy direct off them? <laughs> Thank you. And look at the people you meet. 
You make all walks of life. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy, man. Thanks for all the support you're giving me. Will do. It's a win-win. They get cheaper lobsters. We get a little bit more money for them. 151, mate. 146.50, Charlotte. Thanks, mate. Enjoy. You think of the price when we unloaded fish under 800 grams, where we got 55 for, and we're selling them public for 65, and we're going to buy the tag. It's 50 cents. Do all the book work, and then stand here and sell them. So the public's getting a bargain. They really are. I love it. It's hard work, but I love it. Just being part and, and giving back. Enjoy, mate. $77.70. We've sold out. If I had another 100 kilos, we'd have sold them too. 2.52 kilos you got. Yep, done. Sold. At the end of the day, I'm always proud what Tabor and I achieve. And this was a pretty good trip. It's not very often you get the best lobster in the world straight off the boat oh, and no. you can go cook it for lunch on a barbie. Just make sure you buy a bottle of champagne, mate, <laughs> and you're in. Oh, Two hours after he started, Squizzy Thank is you, sold Enjoy. out. Thanks very much. Combined with his deal with Mel, the bold contender has landed a massive payday. Thank you. Thank you. Ended up with short of $96,000. You know, the gamble paid off. The gamble paid off. Home sweet home. Yes, Dada, yeah. Anyway, hi, Daddy. So he can see us. It's always lovely seeing the family. Like, it means a lot when they come down and watch the unload. My little one, Isabel, she just... She loves what she calls flat flaps. They just, she just adores them. She, I think she dreams of them. So she loves coming down and giving me a hand. Hey, we got we in the wet weather. It's the best time of the trip. How you doing, Bryce? Good, mate. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Bryce's buyers are here, too, including Jock from Muir's Restaurant. He's taking 250 kilograms of Bryce's larger brindles. Do we have to get, put them in the bins? Yeah. You gonna help? Blakey from Processor Salco will take the remainder of the haul, including the extra 300 kilos that were destined for the lobster shack. So at the moment, all we have to do is put fish in bins and let the other people deal with the rest. You get the bin. Get the bin. Go to the bin. Put it down, Uncle Lockie. Thank you. It's nice for Lockie to have someone on the same um, mental age as him yeah. to, to work with down there. Well, she's a bit ahead of him. She's but... a little bit ahead, yeah. yeah. yeah he's got a bit of growing up to do, so... <laughs> Bryce needs at least one and a half tonnes of lobsters to turn a profit this trip. What'd you, what did you end up with? 286.8. 286? Nice. Uh, tally, yeah. So, yeah, 30, nice 30 odd kilo more, no. Cool. That's right, that's good. Yep. It's a good amount. 287 kilos. We're super happy with that. It's around 350 lobsters. I can't complain. It's, it's wonderful. Do you want to do 50? So, add a little bit extra for... I feel happy with that. Us. I won't yeah. say no. Yep, I no, appreciate that. I'll take yeah. your bubble now. No, thank, thank you. you appreciate thank it. it. Thank you very much. Not only has Jock taken an additional 35 kilograms, he's offered to pay $5 more per kilo. In an instant, yeah. adding an extra $1,500 to Bryce's bottom line. The Muir's deal results in a $14,500 payday for the Chieftain. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bryce needs to have unloaded 1,200 kilograms to Blakey if he has any chance of hitting his one and a half tonne trip target. All right. You want to know the number, Bryce? 1,149. Oh, it's going to be tight. They are light. We ended up getting just under that one and a half tonne. We've got 1438. But with Jock coming up with his price, it'll even out. Thank you. Thank you. Save me behind. Save me no, bacon. That's right. me. Bryce has sold his catch for $76,200. Depends what happens. No, we should be good. I'm happy enough with what we got. I'm a green on. There's no doubt about it. I've, I've only been in this industry for a few years, really. 
I'd love to hear what everyone else got. I'd like to know how far behind I was. What's your plan, mate? No plan. No plan? Not going to do anything. Why are you drawing faces on him, mate? Because he drawed faces on a um, banana. Yeah. Didn't he? He did. And mocked us, mate. Mocked us. Only a little bit. Yeah. He tried to draw me on a banana. My eggs look better than his banana. Just give give him a black eye, mate. If he shoots in front of me again like a black eye. before, I'll give him a black eye. <laughs> and I've got 12 of them. Bryce! You about Bryce? Yep. Right. Yo. Hey. What's going on? What are you doing, mate? Cleaning? What are you doing? Oh, you're cleaning this beautiful cleaning. Oh, boat, mate. mate. You never stop cleaning, mate. Maintenance. You're always cleaning. What are you guys up to? I brought you a present. Yeah. I brought you some eggs, but I wasn't going to... I wasn't going to throw them at the chieftain. <laughs> I even drawed faces like you did on me banana. Here, catch it. Catch it. So it looks like you. Look, let him go to my walk. Oh, it's got a little mohawk on it, mate. <laughs> Lo and behold, they're above me. So I think they're here for a bit of revenge. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I'll give you a wash. I'll give you... Oh. 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 I did say the boat was my safe place, and he's probably got me in the, the best place to throw an egg. At the end of the day, my emotions took over. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> well, it was pretty funny. I did enjoy it. I don't think Bryce enjoyed it, but I did. Bryce, just say these words. I will not put a banana again on your boat. Say it. Say it. I will not put an orange back on your boat. You said orange. <laughs> banana. 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 Say it. Say it. Repeat it, Bryce. Do you want a banana? No. I, I won't put a banana back on your boat, Squizzy. All right. War's over. Yeah, walls open. All right, mate. We're done. No worries. Thanks, mate. That's all right. That is done. No more tricks, no more bananas on boats. I know we've cut the bullshit. We've broken some eggs, mended some relationships. Numbers. You going to tell the truth, Squizzy? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'll tell the truth now. 2,215 fish. We had 2,391 fish, 1,930 kilos. So. That's all right. What do you have? Around the 1723 mark or something like that. What did you so. say you had? 2215. Glenn's won. He's only just won, but he's, he's definitely won putting in the days. I had a head start, and like these boys have they've been having day shots where I haven't. Like, um, does it count? We had the fish on board. I'd say the winner's Glenn because he had all reds. It takes a lot longer to catch that amount of reds, especially that large of reds, compared to old Brindle Boy. It's a unanimous decision. The winner is Snotty and the Boys from the Anson's Bay. His all-in $50 per kilo deal pays off and cements his position on top. At the end of the day, the competition was about me breaking Bryce. And we did. And we gave him a bit of lesson. The old bull still got it. Oh, well, see you out there next season, mate. We will. We will indeed. See you out there, Glenn. Cheers, old boy. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully she's a bit better next season. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's all it. good. No worries, boys. No worries. Catch up, is that? Beer time. Beer time. I'm going up the bowl, pretend to give me wet weather gear and give him a hand. Fuck off. <laughs>